Good afternoon, everybody. Today is October the 30th, 2020. I've gotten a lot of questions here lately about mounting my Willwood pedal box. All right there you can see it inside the car how did I do it how did I get all of the geometry correct and everything and I've learned quite a bit uh, in in mounting one of these things I've never done it before and I figured out a lot of a lot of do's and don'ts in the process and so I just wanted to make a quick video for all of those folks that are asking me questions about this how you do this and how you do it correctly the very first thing that I want to tell you is that owning a laser that will draw a vertical line for you on the car from anywhere is incredibly important. If you have a look here at my firewall, you can see that I've got my laser set up to where it draws a line. You see right down there, right there. There we go. You can see that I've got a red line drawn right down the very side of my steering column. We know that the steering column is kind of like a constant in mathematics. It, you know, it ain't going nowhere. It has to be straight with the car. It has to be, you know, centered at the proper mounting spot in the dash and so forth. And so, you know, for starters, that you're going to have to mount your master cylinders there and you're going to have to set your spacing off of your steering column. That is particularly important on a tiny little car like a Nova because if you look down in there, you can kind of see that my master cylinders don't have much room right here at all. So you can see in this shot that I'm able to take this master cylinder in and out of the car just barely because of my spacing. Now, here's where it comes important again that you have this laser. Basically in my car, I had to put my pedal assembly as far over in that direction as possible because if I moved it this way a few inches, it wouldn't fit due to that uh, Detroit speed inner fender. So as a result, you'll notice that the, the, the spacing right here in between the, the brake pedal and the side of the, uh, the column is just practically nothing. There's like a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So it's ultimately going to work but using that laser is what allowed me to get that pedal spaced so perfectly so that I had the maximum amount of, amount of clearance uh, under the, uh, you know, the hood, you know, right there next to the inner fender, and yet still have enough clearance right here next to my, uh, my steering column. That's tip number one, get yourself a laser. Number two, you have got to decide whether or not your master cylinders in the car right there, whether they are going to mount inboard outboard or flush with the firewall, whatever it may be. In my case, you know, my firewall is, is slanted at a bit of an angle, so I then have to make a decision about are those things going to move in or out of the car? And you kind of have to see this picture here to see what I'm talking about. Do you notice how in this picture I've got the mount set up to where it's going to protrude out into the firewall and move my master cylinders forward? However, if you have a look at these other pictures, you can see that I ultimately decided to invert that and make my mounting plate kind of recess into the firewall, kind of going inside the car. I did that for multiple reasons. Again, so that I could gain clearance right up here around my inner fender. And then I also went as far as to put my seat in the car and try and figure out how much leg room was I going to have. So, you know, do you want those pedals to move forward or backward or what do you want them to do? So that's the other decision you have to kind of make is, you know, geometrically speaking, do they need to be inboard or outboard of the engine bay? That's the second thing you got to do. Geometrically speaking, the pedals at this point we've established, you know, whether the pedals were going to be, uh, you know, this direction, this direction, or forward, backward, and so forth. The next decision that you've got to make in mounting a set of pedals like this uh, if you, is you've got to decide how high are they going to be. And again, this affects everything. You have got to have your inner fender in the car because if I were to lower that pedal assembly another two inches, it would be hitting against my Detroit Speed inner fender. So I went around and I measured a few cars and what I found at the end of the day is the distance from the floorboard to the bottom of the pedal on most new cars. I went and measured several of them like a Camaro. You're looking at about five and a quarter to six inches somewhere in there that's about the spacing that you want uh you know from the floorboard to the bottom of the pedal five and a half six inches something like that and that's ultimately going to give you a um, you know a comfortable uh, feeling pedal in terms of the height of the pedal
The next piece of geometry that you have to pay attention to when you're mounting a pedal box in the car is the amount of swing of the pedal. So I, I got in touch with Caleb over at Willwood, and man, I tell you what, just a super great guy to work with. Thank you, Caleb, for all of your help. Uh, he informed me that you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, three to maybe a maximum of four inches of travel, of actual pedal swing. And so uh, you want to make sure when you're mounting these things that you have enough room for that pedal to go all the way to the back and bottom out that master cylinder uh, without hitting anything. So you can see there, I'm not hitting my steering column. I'm not hitting my tow board. You've got to pay close attention to that and, you know, kind of take that into account. I will tell you that I actually had to cut the push rod up in here several times in order to, you know, find the correct length of the push rod for that. You know, uh, Willwood sells uh, replacement push rods that are shorter, but I found it much easier just to cut a quarter of an inch, try that, cut a quarter, try it, cut a quarter, try it, until I finally got to the exact perfect uh, spot. But pay attention to that. Consider that the last thing you ever want to do is get in this car, push the pedal to the floor, and have it literally hit the floor. Uh, just, just don't make that mistake. That would be an absolute nightmare. You might notice that my drive-by wire Camaro throttle pedal right there looks almost just like my Willwood pedals. I actually bought one of these uh, pedals right here just to simply screw it right into the plastic pedal so it basically matches these. So if you're not paying really close attention, it looks like I'm using three of the same pedals even though I'm not. A couple of quick shots here of the mount that I did for that uh, pedal. You can see I just cut it out with a CNC cutter and uh, put some rib nuts in there. And that's what's holding my pedal in place for the throttle. So we've talked about how I made the mounting plate that graphs into the firewall. You, shot, you saw that in the pictures earlier. Now comes the hard part. And I'm going to show you a few photos here where the firewall is not yet in the car. You can see that I have custom uh, CNC cut some plates that go in the car. I ultimately ended up designing those plates by just using like uh, cardboard pieces that I was carefully trimming with scissors until I found something that actually works and I made some custom plates, welded those into the car, then I welded the firewall into place, and ultimately I have the uh, pedal box bolted to both the firewall as well as the bottom side of the cowl, so it, it is extremely rigid. you got to have that thing rigid. Do not bolt it to just the firewall. That's a no-no. All right, there you go. That's the basic rundown on my pedal assembly. You will notice that I've got my Detroit Speed wiper motor installed into the car. Never make the mistake of not installing the big items that go up in that area. Get that stuff in place when you go to do something like the pedal assembly because the last thing you ever want to do is get your pedal box into the car, go to mount something like your wiper motor you know, into the car, and now it doesn't fit because they're trying to occupy the same space. Uh, but anyways, you can have a look there how everything came out. I'm really really pleased with it again super big thanks to caleb at willwood put a link down below in the description to the willwood pedal box that i bought for this car and real quickly i want to show you something that i'm really excited about that's coming up in an upcoming video i am building a console for the car uh, from scratch it's going to be super cool i can't wait to show that to you guys anyways appreciate y'all watching like and subscribe if you appreciate these videos thank y'all very much you have a great one take care